Hi there. I'm continuing to uh, play around with this uh, little clock uh, that I've been messing with. And this video will only be of interest to anybody that uh, wants to see the sort of things that I've been looking at as optional uh, drive mechanisms. Uh, so I've still got the same hips toggle uh, movement as you saw in the last video. So my little bit of Ke Kellogg's cornflake packet is still holding off. And uh, now uh, what I'm doing is I'm giving the pendulum a tap uh, when the uh, uh, toggle calls for uh, energy to put into the system using a lower voltage um, uh, so it's, uh, it, it's tapping fairly frequently and uh, you can see I've just got a bit of bent metal uh, hooked around the bottom of uh, this G-clamp here as a hinge and then uh, when it's energised uh, it, uh, this end smacks into the pendulum giving it a, a nudge at the appropriate time and uh, this little bit of copper wire at the back uh, just stops it from uh, flapping down as sometimes it, uh, it, it falls over. Um, and it just holds it so as it's reasonably close towards the, uh, uh, the core of the, the magnet there. Um, you can have a little spring pulling this back so that uh, the, because there you see the energy is taken out of the pendulum to push this back. Well, a, a very light spring could be used to do the same job. Uh, and and the idea is there is that the force is put into the pendulum that way. If you remember when I had the sorry I don't know if my finger was in shot. The idea is that the force of uh, uh, it drives a pendulum that way. Uh, when I have the uh, magnet at the bottom of the pendulum, so of course it's pulling and the force is acting down on the pendulum. And uh, I don't know if that's uh, really the best way to, uh, to go about things. So I was just looking at uh, some options. This is uh, a piece of driftwood that uh, I picked up on uh, one of the local beaches and uh, in fact it was so long I broke it in half there so I could get it in the car um, but that has the potential to be used as a backboard for the clock uh, it wasn't quite what I was intended um, as, uh, I thought I was going to make something with an art deco look but uh, Sophie wants something that's uh, got uh, a seaside nature to it so uh, I'll see but um, uh, that's uh, about an inch and a half thick um, six foot long and nine inches wide and it, it's clearly a bit of an old boat you can see where the uh, the ribs were and it's got uh, iron uh, fixings so it's a nice looking piece of wood, it's soaking wet at the moment, but it will dry out very well. Uh, this is a, another actuating mechanism I was having a, a quick look at. And uh, it's not uh, particularly brilliant at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll show you on a, something else to give you the idea. Okay, this is the point I'm trying to illustrate. So uh, imagine that uh, this bit of cardboard is my pendulum here and uh, I'll just color the edge of it. So let's say that uh, when the pendulum is at rest it's uh, on a line there and uh, when it's uh, moved fully over to the left it's on a line there and when it's fully over to the right it's on a line there. So the pendulum swings quite happily between those two lines. When the energy diminishes from the pendulum, let's say it's somewhere here. So uh, the hips toddle uh, detects that the swing is uh, diminished and somewhere along this point it actually calls for a boost of energy in which case we want the coil, the magnetic coil, to pull the 
uh, pendulum back to its uh, full ex uh, extent uh, and then it'll swing back to its full extent in the other direction and it'll uh, eventually decay until it gets to the point where the hips toddle activates and calls for more energy. If this is the electromagnet and uh, we have a piece of metal on the pendulum we could say well uh, it, it's at this sort of angle that the um, hips toggle activates and we want to call the pendulum to uh, over to get more energy and the problem is almost whatever we do we have a big air gap so if we had a piece of metal uh, fixed to the pendulum here and we have the magnet there remember the pendulum is going to swing at least this far so if the magnet was there uh, when it's when the pendulum's over here there's a big air gap at this point but it's got to be there because when it's called uh, if we had the magnet there then the pendulum would hit the magnet so we wind up with this air gap and on that uh, little mechanism that I showed you, jury rigged with sellotape and bits of wire, this is what I was setting out to do. Um, just assemble this with my cardboard rivets. Okay. Uh, essentially, I've got a, another arm that's. Uh, in sympathy with the pendulum and uh, then this little cross arm here and if I hold these two level um, and uh, those, those two the same distance apart then as I swing backwards and forwards here um, you'll see let's just put a bit of weight on that let's Uh, you'll see if I put a mark here and then scribe the arc that that creates. I um, don't know if you're getting this or not. But there's a very shallow angle there I think I'll do that in pen again I'm following from this mark here and that's my cut off in one direction that's my cut off in the other direction and that out of interest is bottom dead center so if I draw a straight line across there hopefully you'll see that at this point there is a very very uh, small gap between where let's say the magnet could go so if the magnet went there somewhere here and uh, then the uh, the metal part of the pendulum whatever that may be let's have something that represents the metal if this were the metal uh, you can see it will swing through an arc and it will always be very close to the magnet there must be a difference and the magnetic force must uh, be able to pull in order to create movement um, so that is the the notion and that's what I'm setting out to achieve the disadvantage with this system of course is that I now generate three more bearing points um, that one I've got to have anyway but um, so I've got three lots of friction um, but I don't think that's a big problem what I'm looking to do is make something that's very efficient on battery power 
and uh, say keep coming back to this uh, magnetic function is an inverse square function or the, the law that uh, applies to it is an inverse square law so there is a big advantage in keeping the air gap smaller and I suspect that that will be um, more advantageous uh, than the uh, potential friction from these three extra bearings. I'll have a look anyway. And if you've got some better ideas or other notions, um, let's let's hear them and uh, see if uh, if they're worth putting into practice. Well, this is the revised mechanism, and I'm so there's a, a relatively small air gap there. But um, uh, it translates into quite a, a huge um, downward pull on that uh, on that metal bar. So I've got that little uh, metal bar there. I've got that little metal bar there swinging uh, left and right. Um, but. Um, it's uh, it, it still needs charging um, on every pulse. I'm not getting uh, a, a lot of extra energy into the pendulum, so it, I haven't really achieved what I set out to achieve uh, there. But um, anyway, I thought it was worth having a look at because um, notionally it was a good idea. But uh, there you go. Well, this is uh, another adaptation of the same thing and what I'm doing now is I'm using the sort of notion of a, a pantograph effect and because I've got the pendulum pivoted at that height and this secondary pendulum pi pivoted at this height um, and joined together by this common strap this has the effect of reducing the uh, angular displacement of this uh, secondary uh, arm. So if you look at these two swinging arms and you see, uh, I'll put some uh, red lines on the uh, uh, screen when I edit this. Uh, so you can see the, the gap on the left between the armature and the uh, end of the coil there so this this thing I'm calling this the armature and uh, this the, uh, the coil um, you see there's a, a reasonably small gap there and for that swing um, but on this side you'll see I've got quite a, a large gap but the reality is if I was to put this coil somewhere up here um, uh, relative to that pendulum. I could achieve the same thing there without all of this uh, additional mechanism. I've been looking at all sorts of things and um, I've been working with a, uh, a much shorter toddle uh, to see what the effects of that are but uh, I've got so much footage now it, uh, it takes so long to upload everything that uh, I, unfortunately I can't show you everything I'm playing with. This worked reasonably well it's a six inch nail that I've bent and uh, clamped to the pendulum and that's drawn into the coil and you can see I tried two different sizes of coil but the larger coil worked better it's possible I could have something like that fixed on the pendulum and then uh, use the solenoid to repulse uh, that magnet. I've got this set up here so as the uh, field is uh, repulsing that little magnet but uh, the magnet is just uh, not very clever it was probably a good magnet ten years ago um, but uh, it, it clearly it would work if I had a decent magnet once again I've waffled on for too long I uh, hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching bye bye